we're good. I think we're good. I think we're good. Good. We're good. Okay. Excellent. Good. good. Yes. Uh, All right. We talk at talk the Mac. Talk at the Mac. Something yeah. I would do. Oh. Welcome to the 2023 Red River Men's D1 Final. We have the Blacks kicking off in black to the Reds in the white with the red strip today. Really, really excited for this match. I'm Wendy Young and I'm joined by Josh Kukendall. We will be have the mics for this one. And uh, these teams essentially undefeated at this point, just losing to each other and then getting to this final. Josh, what are you looking forward to most? I'm definitely looking forward to uh, the, the Blacks to be able to take advantage of miscues like that and get off to a five-point start. That's you, amazing. We couldn't have scripted that <laughs> had we tried. Yeah, really, jo really great job there. Charge it down of that kick and getting an early five points for the Blacks. And you can hear somewhat a hometown crowd. We're at Nixon Lane today with these beautiful facilities, which is the Austin Hunts and the Austin Valkyries pitch. But seeing an early lead by the Blacks... <laughs> that was exciting. That was really exciting. It's really lovely weather all day. We got some cloud cover coming in today, hovering just below 80 degrees. Uh, the wind has pretty much died down, so great weather for some rugby today. Yeah, it's kind of overcast. We've had a little bit of wind, like you were saying, throughout the day. We've had fantastic run of matches leading up to this, but this one a little bit different than some of the other matches, as this is a final, as opposed to the others are semifinals, where they'll move on to the finals tomorrow. This match, the team will move on to the uh, semifinals at the uh, USA Rugby Playoffs, so really, really exciting. Um, and historically, these teams have done very well on the national level. Um, the Dallas winning the most recently, but the Blacks have won it a few times themselves. So this, beyond this five quick points that was scored, should be an absolutely barn-burning match today. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this match basically all week. You know, as soon as I got the call that I was going to be able to come down, had the fingers crossed and landed on this one. Thanks so much, Wendy. And uh, looks like we're... Up seven zero to start off here. Yeah, really quick start by the Blacks. You know, that charge down kick. If you're just joining us, this is the 2023 Red River Men's D1 final between the Dallas Reds and the Austin Blacks. Essentially undefeated teams, only losing to each other in the league matches, and the Blacks up seven to zero. And just a quick question for you, Wendy. I was thinking about this. What are the odds that uh, any club has ever gone three and zero on the day in a playoff here in Texas? With the Blacks? Yes. They have done it before. They did it last year. Really? Yeah. They've done it quite a bit. Um, I think the year before that, their D2 side lost. But they do often go three for three, the Blacks. But then the Reds have also done yeah, it before, go, go too. But please. today, just the Reds, their only side that's Thank in is this know. D1 match. As this kick, huge kick over the top, gathered in by Alex Elalia. It's baby Alex, the nickname. And I just want to say that the players filled these forms out themselves. So some of the facts might be really fun today. But scrum half getting us going for the Reds. Achavar, Wild Bill getting us going. Full five, six inches. Going to control this Dallas Red side from the base of that scrum. And they change directions here out to Simba. And a little bit of a dropped pass there. So a miscue by the Reds. Just dropped by the Missile. He's played, for the, played rugby for eight years, but dropping that one. So we'll see our first scrum of the match to the Blacks. Definitely looking for the Reds to come out and have a dominant scrum on this one. Uh, a good friend there, Simbarase Mushawara, definitely got the uh, MVP for the national championship last year. And yes. he is in solid form right here and uh, expecting his first child here soon. So congratulations to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Simba. Super exciting. Love to hear that. Rugby will continue, hopefully. Chance for the Blacks here, getting that early score in the first 30 seconds of the match. This one spinning on the top, but Cisco Lopez, our center referee, going to let this one go on. He is supported today by Joe Meyer and Drew Lowe as the assistant referees. And the Blacks not making too much distance on that one. Did get about eight meters before they're brought down. We are expecting a stalwart defense from the Reds today. They are known for their defense as a big carry coming in from Tevita Vake Kayatua carrying that ball and Cisco Lopez in on an exchange as this is a very big match today our premier match pressure coming from the Blacks they're on their heels a bit the Reds in there trying to steal this one but the Blacks will maintain pressure 
I'd expect uh, we might have a box kick if that um, that offense really stalls out here. But now it looks like the Blacks are able to spread the ball wide, move it around as they like. With the big man ball in hand, with a quick offload, yet another big man. And they've got penalty advantage also. Lopez seeing something at that breakdown on the far side. So they are going to change this direction. Timmy on the carry there. An absolutely smashing run barreling through the line, but now isolated, having to wonder, that penalty now coming, tackler not releasing. It was a really impressive uh, ball movement there by the Blacks to get the ball left and right and left once again, just really spreading out that defense, trying to test, uh, sending it back and forth and looking to see if any of the Reds might bite, leave a little seam and a little hole for them to take advantage of. And Kurt Moore at the fly half for the Blacks is going to put this one, he's going to try to put this one into touch and he does drive this one down in there, looking at around a five to seven meter line out. Really good opportunity for them to look to pile some more points on, possibly. Yeah, let's see if they can get the big men involved here. So, uh, I would expect that they're going to try to go ahead and maul this one in, test that defense and see, uh, test the metal there of the, the Reds forwards and see what they can get going. Yeah, and on the throw in will be Vake Kayatu for the Blacks have seen them maul most of the season. They like to control the line out, get that drive going, go to the back this time, and they will maul. Let's go! The Reds join, but it is on roller skates as they move within the five meters. Still going, the Blacks. You can see the ball at the back there. It separates, so they punch it out to the backs now. And that outside ball, they've got space on the outside. It's a three on one, but oh, it's just, just over the top. Wow. Really knocking on the door. That's got to be nerve-wracking for this defense. But I know that, you know, the Reds have been in a couple close matches this season. So they're definitely used to the pressure at this point, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. And most of these, their games, their other teams that they've played, larger score lines. But when these two played, very tight matches. So we expect more of that today. But really positive looking from the Blacks there. Just that pass goes to hand. And we've got a totally different game as the Reds look to restart this. They'll sell, they will maul themselves. The Blacks not joining, so it needs to produce. Now they join. That's Timothy joining. But there was some changing of lanes there. Cisco Lopez giving the penalty to the Blacks. That was Nathan Jones on the uh, the collect there. Set up in the lineout. I won't call him by his nickname that he wrote down here because I work with him. and It's inappropriate. Oh, no, it's appropriate. I just won't give him that... Uh, that pleasure. <laughs> so Black's really in control in this first couple of minutes of this match. Seven and a half minutes gone, leading by seven points. They've got another opportunity here with a scrum. And expecting this very experienced Black scrum to put the pressure on the Reds here. I wouldn't believe you unless there was a clock in front of me. It feels like there's been more than eight minutes gone. This is an action packed game already. And Craig Hunt pulling this one out of the back. We've got a, the wing inserting on the weak side. It's a beautiful run by Lancaster. They are one poacher in there, so they get the penalty. Tackler not rolling, so you can't poach until that tackler rolls. Discipline a problem for the Reds early on. Yeah, let's hope that they can uh, clean that up because that was just really costly. If you're going to give them another chance, of course, the Blacks electing here go to a scrum get half of the, the the defense there caught up and bound in there so that they can give their backs uh, free access to run, see if they can create some holes, less guys out there on the, uh, to cover all that space. And Black's initially showing maybe they were going to split their backs, but now just go to that normal strong side. We do have Lancaster lurking on the outside of the scrum here, so we could see several options for the Blacks here, but the Reds having to play a lot of defense as Hunt gets this scrum going. And they are gonna go to Lancaster. Their man on the edge, he's quick, quick feet, but he's tackled well. And they're gonna just reverse that direction. Big carry there by Timothy Howard. And then now into the big mitts of Samuel Johnson, getting them ever closer. They're just about maybe on the two meter line. And they're gonna go back out to Lancaster, see if he can beat his one on one. And he does, he's to the edge. And I believe he's touched that down for another try for the Blacks. Yes, that that initial call is the is a, a try. So don't think the AR is gonna come by and, and give us any new information that we didn't see. So that's gonna put the Blacks up early, 12-0. Let's hope that the uh, 
the Reds can get a turnover here, get some some offense on the field because playing defense for an entire game will be absolutely exhausting. Yeah, and really just giving Lancaster the shot there, first giving him one right away on the scrum to the right, letting him have a go at his opposite number, and then moving it to the left a little bit, but then immediately coming back to Lancaster, and he's able to beat his opposite. I believe that was Kelly Colbert's spike missing that tackle, some really good footwork by Lancaster. Yeah, and that was pretty gutsy for them to, uh, clearly they've got a lot of confidence in their wing there to go back to him, back to back right there, and uh, it paid off, so good on them. Absolutely, and we'll just wait for the kick attempt here. This is Kurt Morath, and you can see that AS on his shoulder. It stands for Alan Sharpley, who passed earlier. Just a stalwart of the Austin Blacks Club, a TRU Hall of Fame member, just been involved in rugby for so long, and I love that they're honoring him. You see the, the Austin Blacks that are back here huddled at midfield. They are in high spirits and looking to put the pedal to the metal here and see if they can't uh, stretch this, this advantage here for more than 12 points. Really put the pressure on the Reds, see if um, they might crack underneath it. So conversion is missed. So we'll keep it at 12 as Josh was just telling us. But Reds are going to want to get something going for them here. They're not used to playing from behind. So we'll have to see if they're going to change up their tactic or stick to their plan. The kick is going to go a bit deep and may go straight into touch. It does, so another mistake by the Reds. And you can just hear that large black supporting crowd up there. They're loving it right now. Well, they've got uh, two whole sides worth of uh, players over there that didn't have to go far to, to get over here and show their support for their D1 team here. But yeah. While it seems like uh, in this first 12 minutes uh, things are not going well for the Reds, I would definitely never count them out. This is a very solid team. They've played in a lot of playoff matches. They've played this exact team multiple times, historically very close, like we've said many times. Yeah. And, you know, I, we can't count this out, not until probably the 79th minute. Yeah, yes, <laughs> agree with you there. As we get the scrum going, of course, and that kickoff goes straight out, they can re-kick or scrum, and most of the time they can... They'll re-kick. They actually could pick a line out as well. So just resetting this scrum is Cisco Lopez, our exchange referee, looking for that checklist and looking for that space, those six shoulders of the props to come together. And looks like it was just some loose feet, so they'll just move this over. It has been impeccable weather today. It is a bit cloudy now, and, and tomorrow we'll have to see for our three finals tomorrow as starting at 11, 1, and 3. The weather not looking so good for tomorrow. We might have some rain. No, the forecast is looking a little bit ominous, but I got to tell you right now, the pitch conditions all day have been great. The grass looks phenomenal. Yeah. Top notch that the Austin Huns and Valkyries have done here at Nixon as the penalty comes for the Blacks. The Reds coming down. They're going to go quick into the hands of Connor Delapiana. And he goes to Lancaster. He's going to try to beat on the outside again. He's looking just absolutely electrifying today. And then they bring the attack back to the left, going wide. They do have an overlap over there. They've got some forwards in the line. They don't need them as they slide through in the hooker. Katu is going to touch this down for the Blacks with three unanswered tries for this Black side. What are the Reds going to do? Uh, I tell you what they got to do to stop that one right there is be able to spread and fan your defense out very quickly. Obviously, they were able to... It looked like it was a four on two on the far side there, and just they had one guy trying to cover three, and that's never going to work out. I don't care how good you are, it's at this level, you, you can't leave those guys out on an island to defend the whole sideline by themselves. Yeah, the athleticism and the speed we're seeing in this match, it's a high pace match already. The Reds, obviously not out of this, but 17 unanswered points for the Blacks, and we're just 14 minutes into this first half. Yes, and you can tell that some of the Reds players are definitely not happy. A couple of them threw a quick punch at the uh, the goalpost there, and I don't blame them. That's uh, it's very uncharacteristic for them. Yeah, that frustration coming out for some of the Reds players as we await this conversion attempt it is out on the edge over there, so it will be a tougher kick. The wind died down and is barely pushing the flags now. As Kurt Morath lines this one up to look to extend the lead even further for the Blacks. He's got the distance, but just outside the post, so the score will stay 17 to 0. 
and the Reds have got to get this kickoff right. They've oh, got to absolutely. check the boxes here. Yeah, if they're going to have a good good attack at this one, they've got to start at the very beginning, put the the boot to the ball there, try to uh, collect it, or you know, try to muddy up that first ruck as much as possible, try to draw a penalty, try to draw a turnover, just something to be able to get back into this you know game before it starts uh, slipping away. And this time, really deep on the kick, so the Blacks just return this one, and it's a nice kick. Looks like they're going to have a line out the Reds just inside the Blacks' territory. So a better opportunity for them now. We know that lots of tries come from kicks and, excuse me, come from lineouts. So this is a great set piece opportunity for the Reds. Pushing, pushing the dead ball. No. Oh, yeah. All right, the Reds are quickly moving it back out after winning that lineout. Yeah, and that's a really nice run by Amungo. Terry Cruz is the nickname he's listed. And again, the players chose these nicknames, and we're going to use them because it's great. That is the second spike on the field there, yeah. carrying that ball in. And a penalty coming, not rolling by the Blacks. So the ball bouncing the way of the Reds on this one. Let's see what they do with it. Assume they're going to kick to the line and try to get this line out. This might be the spark that starts the uh, the comeback. Yeah, and a beautiful kick there by William Ashavar, Wild Bill. He's 24 years old, started playing rugby at Montpellier Havat Rugby in the south of France before coming here. He played in a French pronunciation I'm not even going to try. But it was in a Paris <laughs> sub area in Federal 3. You can hear the uh, the Blacks forwards, they're, they're contemplating what to do here on defense, keeping in mind of all the channels, knowing that there could be... Uh, a quick little shenaniganry. And it's a short line out, but it bounces up into the Blacks' hands. And Tavita carrying this one up. He's been very active at the hooker position. And then now it's a big pass over the top. There's a little bit of green grass out there, less defenders. Stolen by the Reds. It's a beautiful ball by Missalagia, the missile. And now the Reds with the upper hand inside the 22 of the Blacks. 17 minutes gone. Can they get their first points of the match? It does look like we have one Reds player down, slow to get up. I believe that is the missile, the ball carrier from a moment ago. I believe that's six. And now they're going to go towards him. So the, his teammate, seeing that he can't go that way, Pat's bringing it over. And Simba on the huge carry. Unfortunately, lost forward in that tackle. Yeah, stolen by the Blacks. They've got lots of numbers out here. Lancaster just dropping that one though, that pressure from Kohlberg coming. And now we'll have a scrum to the Reds, so another opportunity for the Reds here. Starting to look a little bit better. We're starting to see how the Reds want to play, their intentions. What does it look like to you, Josh? Uh, it looks like uh, they've, they've been bottling up some, some energy there, so they're definitely uh, quick to, to get the ball out and get it moving the way that they want to. They're uh, definitely having success in finding their attacking shape uh, here in open play, definitely putting the pressure on the Blacks, but they're, I think the Blacks' defense is, is responding fairly well. You see a lot of line speed. Of course, they've got fresh legs, uh, only the first 20 minutes of this contest. So let's see if they can keep that up. This is a great game so far. Absolutely. And uh, Adjavar is going to put this one in, get this going, and immediate pressure coming from the Blacks, so they're going to pick it out of the back. That's Chad Joseph with the pickup. Just a little bit of a bouncy ball, but stays with the Reds. And they're going to keep this attack going to the outside. The missile with the carry now. He's well matched, though. Good to tackle there by the Blacks. And slower ball. They're going to bring in their forwards and slow this down a little bit. Go blow for blow, the forwards. That was a tricky little ball there. It looked like they, uh, they feigned that there was a miscommunication and saw a hole open up in it tried to uh, take advantage there. Love this choice of putting this one up and letting Kohlberg have a go. Lancaster coming down with it, though. He's surrounded by white shirts. But has some decent leg drive to get through there. And now the Reds counter-rucking this one, but they're going to get the penalty. Never rolling was the tackler, says Lopez. And he comes up questioning that call. Obviously felt like he was trapped in there, but doesn't matter. 
I think that was a little payback. It seemed like uh, the Reds were able to capitalize on, on trapping a, a Blacks tackler earlier. So definitely going blow for blow, showing that um, you know these teams know each other well. They know you know what each is going to try to do in each situation. So just really kind of the best match you could you can ask for for this men's D1 final. Absolutely, and Marath putting that one into touch. Still 17 to zero, so Blacks on an early run if you're just matching us. And we're gonna take a hydration break, but just to recap this first 20 minutes, it's been absolutely a blistering pace. The Blacks scoring very quickly off of a charge down and then scoring after that as well. And Dallas has been underneath the gun here. Oh yeah, it definitely seems like the first 14 minutes of the game were entirely lopsided. Everything that you could think going for the Blacks and going in their favor. You know, they were able to capitalize on it quickly, as they will do, because they're such a, a finesse, like a really tight team. But not to say that the Reds aren't either. They can cause turnovers, take quick ball, as you saw. Uh, the forwards are very dominant in contact, and you know they've got some speedy backs, also some very large backs that you know will will test these uh, these Austin defenders. Yeah, I think, you know, Reds get a little more ball time. They're going to be dangerous. Um, and then they've also got to try to stop this black side who's got a lot of momentum. They've got 17 points on their side. They've got to do something here to stop this guy, this guy, these guys and then be able to do the right things themselves and get some points on the board here. Well, certainly, and I think uh, this Austin side is in, in no hurry to, uh, you know, to get too anxious to, to make those small mistakes that, that a team that is, is down by 17 points with, that might might cause, you know? Yeah, and really seeing the Blacks with a lot of intention here, but this hydration break could be critical for both of these teams. Take that moment, just cue up what you need to work on, tweak a couple things, and then come out of here and change the, the uh, momentum of this game potentially. You know, I'm curious to see uh, at the end of this contest if um, those, those four points okay, off those misconversions might come back and, and haunt this Blacks team. They could. And as we get ready to restart this, Tivita going to throw this in. And it's a long one, but over the top, touched by Red, so there is a scrum advantage, and they will come back for it. Just reaching a little bit far for that Colin Urin. Boogie trying to catch that one and not able to gather it in. Boogie had full head of steam, though, with that one. Had been able to collect that ball, that would have been a problem for this Blacks defense. Let's see if... Uh, can't really tell if there's an edge one way or the other as to which team is, is performing better in this scrum. They, they look really evenly matched. Yeah, absolutely. And just looking over this roster, we got Simba, who has too many credentials to read. I'll just read out some of the really ones that I think are impressive. Um, he's been on the Zimbabwe Sables, which is their men's na national team. He's got two caps there. He also played on the Griffins, which were trying to be a pro team at the time. Um, and then he played some D1, D2 football as well. So a crossover athlete just really has the experience there. And another big penalty to the Reds. The Blacks not releasing there. Yeah, that was unfortunate. He, he was definitely clearly held. Had he just taken the second to, to set the ball down, collect himself, and keep going, that would have been perfectly fine. But yes, uh, back to our friend Simba here. I've also recently heard that he's a great orator. That's what I hear, too. It says that in the notes, yeah. <laughs> he was also a, a solid player at Midwestern State during his college years. I was uh, just lucky enough to be old enough to him to have graduated and not have to face him head-to-head. -head. But I did spend some time playing with him while he was with uh, Dallas Athletic Rugby Club. And another short line out by the Reds. They stay with the four-man. And immediately swallowed up is Heron, big red. But he's able to maintain it for the Reds. And they've got the forwards stacked in that back line. So smashing through the line. Big gain line break there and they're going to go quick hands again but just through the fingertips and then again so double knock on there going to come back for this scrum so starting to see a little bit of mishandles and I think it's the pressure at this point the defensive pressure is immense for both of these sides oh absolutely and I've, I've played against some of these these well coached uh, well maintained black sides and just the, the pressure of knowing that any mistake that you have can go for 40 to 50 meters is is pretty intense that in and of itself, and then obviously having a 17-point deficit. <laughs> yes. But it, it, you see every time that the black or the, every time that the Reds have the ball in hand, you see those little sparks, and it's just one extra pass here or there, and they're going to be on the scoreboard in no time. 
As we get this scrum restarted, there's a bit of a push from the Reds, but the Blacks pull it out of the back. Nice inside ball coming around for Cameron. And then the scrum half just picking it up himself and looking for some space. A little backhanded flick. But now the Reds are on this one. Great clearance there to keep the ball alive for the Blacks. Howard isolated a little bit. Maybe an extra roll there, but stays with the Blacks. Looking for that 50-22 opportunity. What a kick this is. Big one over the top. Which side of the flag? Ooh, in goal, I believe. Yep, that one just went, just split the in goal uh, flags right over there. So unfortunately, that one's going to come all the way back. Yeah, we're going to come back for the scrum there. But really good idea to try to pin the Reds again and then maybe get that lineup for themselves. Oh, absolutely. And then, you know, you, you got to test that kick early so that you know that their their wings keep that in mind. So they know that it, it's always a, a threat there that they have the possibility of making that kick there in the future. You know, just, just one more tactic that... I noticed you had been saying in the Division Three game that the Blacks were on. If you know, if the opposing team is bringing their their back three in to help defend, they're going to kick. And as soon as they send it back, uh, their back three deep to defend that kick, they're going to hit you on the other end with their uh, their speed around the edges. Yeah, they'll try to run right through you. Yeah, so it's like a conundrum. What do you do, right? You got to be able to balance covering the entire pitch and the front line. But that's really what your front three are for too. We can see just a little bit of a messy scrum here. So Lopez is going to restart us. Seeing on our side, both props diving in a little bit. So Cisco, yeah, maybe coming over and checking out this side. And you see that the, the Reds forwards are definitely putting a lot of pressure on the Blacks right now. They're able to get a really strong drive. But luckily, the, the Blacks are able to hook that ball out and get it out quickly. Um, albeit a little bit dirty because you know, obviously there's a lot of motion there going with all 16 guys pushing. Yeah, and just glancing at these, we've got some weights for Dallas, which is really exciting. They've got to be over a thousand pounds easily in that scrum. So a lot of weight, a lot of height, all that pressure coming through. Now they settle finally. And Dallas withholding that push, picking it out of the back. Chad Joseph not getting too far. He was picked up immediately by the flankers and they're trying to hold him up. He finally gets to deck and they're going to push this one out to the backs to the right. And you can hear that hands call out here just wanting some simple play for the Reds. Nothing fancy right now. They've got to get back inside of this game and I mean by points. They've got to score some points here. 25 minutes gone, 17 points for the Blacks. They've got to make something happen here quickly. And another mishandle, and we've got a player down for the Reds as well. Time off. I think we're going to have an injury, just to have the medics come out here. But these miscues by the Reds really hurting them. Oh, absolutely. And then just to, to add one more layer to this uh, the stressful pie that we're concocting at the moment, <laughs> I, I did notice that the, the Reds place kicker was slotting uh, kicks really easily from about 40 meters out. Ooh. So that's got to be something that's in the back of uh, this Austin side's uh, mind. If they're, you know, not even pinned in their own 22 and they commit a, a full arm penalty. Yeah, and it looks like we are going to come back for this penalty here and we're going to see a yellow card. Okay, no for the Blacks, number four receiving that yellow card. Kyle Breton back going to come and have a 10 minute sit so the Reds this could have been what they're looking for they're going to have 10 minutes where they have a man advantage and they drive this one down and they are inside just outside the 22 for the Blacks this is could be what they needed yeah we'll see if they can capitalize with the the one man advantage but yeah I think it's going to be really dicey um you know really these guys are really dangerous with ball in hand and there's just that one that one extra guy worth a uh, of uh, space there and those holes are really going to open up yeah nice rumbling run around the outside that's boogie picking that one up and then now they get ready to keep this attack going they do have a couple of blacks in there trying to disrupt this breakdown and then this one is disrupted it's off the foot so we play on it's a great pickup by spencer cameron and he's still going two tacklers they finally bring him to the deck they've crossed over that 40 meter line and right now, they do not look like they've got a man down as the Reds steal this into the grubby hands of the Reds. And they begin the attack again. This is frenetic, absolutely amazing rugby that we're witnessing here. If you didn't know there was any point scored, it could be easily 0-0 right here. 
as the Reds put this one over the top. So now the Blacks are going to work this one out of their own zone. Big run by Delapina. He's absolutely smashed by Big Red, though. What a hit that was. Physical out there. Now Tavita on the run. It's a little bit isolated, so we have a couple of players trying to poach. They don't get it, though. It's going to go back out to Marath. He keeps it himself. And then Lancaster's calling for it. Holds it just a little bit, the scrum half. It buys some time for Lancaster. He beats one, two. Look at that power. What a tackle that was by the scrum half, Achvar. Now it's disrupted and into the hands, but penalty to the Blacks. I think that's for fly hacking. It's that technical law that nobody really knows, but you can't kick it out the hands of the player. Fly hacking. Okay. I was going to say, I hope he's not bringing it back for that, that, uh, that tackle because it did look at a, a touch dicey but definitely the wing jumped into it a bit there i think cisco was was good to see that that was a mitigating factor not blow that one dead oh yeah and now the blacks just slowing this down 28 minutes gone Marath content to just kind of slow this down put this one into the corner and then again they're going to be threatening for another five points otherwise yes and just about seven and a half minutes left on this yellow card, so I, you know, if you were the Blacks right now, you definitely want to slow it down as much as possible, you know, so that the Reds don't take advantage of this power play. So we've been seeing the Blacks try for this long throw, and it's been going over the top. This one is better, and then comes off the back. It's picked up by Hayden Johnson. It's eventually brought down to deck by the Reds' defense. And then out to Howard, short ball to him. And then a nice pick up there, sneaking around the edge of that yeah, ruck. That's what I'm like. I'm like, okay, look. And then they'll change directions. Big run by Tamatalesi. And then a penalty against the Blacks now. So the Reds take over. They're going to go fast. It's Big Red, that big lock. And it's into the fly half's hands. And then out to the inside center. Excuse me, it's the fullback. That's Alex Elali on the carry. And they're already up to the 40, threatening. The crowd reacting to the Reds driving that extra couple of meters off the ruck. You can't do that. You have time to just off, time off, time ruck and you cannot drive the player through. So actually Cisco is going to go time off here and have a chat. This may be like a neck roll. There could be a couple of things that we could be looking at here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Both sides of the stands are getting in on this one. Some calling for, some calling against. It, you know, again, that would have been a penalty that was done right in front of the stands on that so far side of the field. Just a penalty, so no escalation there, but the Blacks come out of it on this one, and again, they're going to work this clock as we tick over to almost 30 minutes gone. Very quick start to this match. The Blacks piled on 17 points while the Reds still scoreless. We have seen them get down into that Blacks territory, but haven't been able to do much with it. A couple of miscues, knock-ons. Some problems for the Reds that they appear to be trying to work out. But the Blacks will have another line out here as we have another extended period of time where the Reds are on defense. And I would say that um, I think that the, the lack of points uh, for the Reds so far in all of their attack has been a little bit more of uh, their miscues than uh, the stellar defense of this Austin side. While it has been, you know, rather suffocating at times, I mean, these Reds are they're just deadly. They're like. Those, those backs can get the ball moving and punish you for it very quickly. Yeah, lots of knock-ons, but we're good here on this line out. The Mall now stripping off and going forward again. Dangerous by the Blacks here, already going 10 meters. Now it's 15. They've got to be inside the five-meter line. They finally pull it out. It's a low ball and just dribbled there. It's picked up by the Reds, but we're going to come back for that scrum. So now we're talking about knock-ons by the Reds, and now the Blacks have a couple. You know, I think they, they're just thinking it's been so easy so so far once they get down into the, that 22-meter that zone. They, they might just uh, not be thinking and focusing on getting those clean balls out and getting uh, good passes all the way down. Uh, and we were talking about that front row a bit ago for the Reds, and we need to talk about Taye Eliangjo. Uh Yippie Taye is his nickname, but he's got six years with UGA RFC USA South Under 23's Dallas Jackals developmental player, and he found rugby. He was invited by a friend. I think most of us found rugby that way as well, but he has played for quite a bit as well. And he comes in at a uh, 
265 pounds as the Reds find a little half gap here, sliding through is Alali, and then trying to get it out to Kelly Kohlberg, but it's going to go into touch. Going to come back for the penalty, though. So playing some advantage in the scrum. So the Blacks breaking apart at that scrum. Number three, not holding his bind and, and abandoning the scrum. That was quite a long advantage to be playing it uh, in favor of the Reds. Let's see, we'll have, uh, we're right in dangerous way at the commentary booth with that kick, but it was very well, very well done. Finds a touch easily. And we'll see if the Reds can do keep working that magic with that four-man line out that's been working so well for him so far. It has been working, the, and the knock-ons have been coming in the back line, so you know that they've got to be feeling that pressure too. Their forwards are performing, and they've got to perform now. As Boogie gets ready to throw this one in. Love the hold to try to get him there, but that pump coming from Boogie. So a miscue again, and we were just giving the forwards some love. Oh, wow. It's the curse of the commentator. It's been striking all day for us, so it was going to happen in this game sooner or later. And this is a short arm of free kick, so the Blacks will just opt to tap this one in and get it on as they get it into the hands of Jay Tuavati. And he is tackled by Big Red, but now it's out to Howard. And then they've got a bit of space on the outside here, but it's picked up by the Reds. Oh. And he has got lots of gas in front of him. Does he have the legs? He's got some coming from behind, but he's gonna slide over. That's a fantastic try by the missile, getting the first point on the board for the Red. And we can no longer say that the Blacks are up 17 to zero. 17-5 now. That yellow card finally coming through for the Reds, taking advantage of it. But what an individual effort by the missile. And also to mention, we've only got about two minutes left on that red card. Yellow. Yellow card. Yes. Not, we don't want to change colors. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, that's the, the working law that's going to go into this next yeah. uh, World Cup, correct? Potentially. Yeah, very interesting where they can give a yellow on the field, review it for 10 minutes back in the TMO box, and then upgrade if they need to. Very interesting. We're not doing that today, though. You're safe. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a weight off my shoulders, let me tell you. <laughs> really, so uh, I'd be curious to hear what uh, this Austin side is, is discussing while they're over there huddled behind the uprights because after these getting off to a, a first, you know, th that three-try lead, it was all high spirits. They were all talking about had them right where they wanted. And slots the conversion, ice in his veins, puts up 17-7. to seven. So now just a two-score game, 10 points. 34 minutes gone, five minutes left here. The Reds getting some momentum, individual effort by Missile, but they need to build on this because the Blacks are not going to stop. They're going to keep coming. They're relentless, and they're not going to let this stop them. Absolutely not, and it's going to be really interesting because, as I noticed, the wind is starting to kick up, so it will be in the Austin Blacks' favor when they switch sides for the second half. I wonder if that's going to um, play into anyone's hands as far as kicking strategy. It could. It's it's a little bit at the Reds' backs, and we saw it used early on. The Blacks were used it mercifully against their game against the Arrows in the D3 semifinal. But this one, a medium kick off the kickoff, and it's batted back by the Reds, but then all the way back to the five, and they're going to touch it down inside the end goal, so it's going to be a goal line dropout. So they'll restart this with a drop kick to the Blacks. See, and that's full time for the yellow card, so it'll be coming back on. And that's right, I did say yellow card this time. You did good, and Kyle Breckenback will be coming back on in just a moment, but live ball still, it's a deep restart to the Blacks. And he's gonna just test this out, but he's tackled well. And then out to the left, some forwards in the line, looking dangerous, that's a great run by Jay Tuavati. Evades the first tackler, and then now it's out to the back line. We've got a two-on-one here. Kelly Kohlberg trying to, does get the tackle eventually. But the Blacks maintain possession. It's out to Morta and then out to Davida. It's Johnson on the carry, but a big smashing hit coming in and a loose ball. 
penalty coming. Again, kicking, and they're going to go quick this time. The Reds are not on sides, but they'll get this one out to the side. It's finally picked up. Yeah, they're going to come back. They were never 10, so we're going to come back for this one. And the yellow card, Kyle back on, so full 15 on 15. You know, we we thought that that, that one-man disadvantage was going to play out, but really the, the Reds kind of unable to capitalize on that one so far. They were able to get the, the one try, but it seemed like you know, that was off of a quick turnover. Yeah, it was almost luck, right? Like he just was in the right place at the right time. They didn't craft anything, really. They didn't take advantage of it. No, and then you, you see uh, the Austin side really weave it in and trying to find uh, any seams in, in the defensive line there from the Reds, and it's it's not there. It, it, time is off. It's uh, impressive how cohesive this uh, defensive line has been so far. And the Blacks, you know, taking a little extra time here, so Cisco just trying to urge them to play on so he went time off for a second but now we're back on they're going to tap it and carry this one so a training ground move the big first carry by johnson Definitely. big tackle there and they're just knocking on the door at the two meter line very close the blacks they haven't scored since about 20 minutes in we do have a white player poaching stealing this one back for the reds taking it away from the blacks that's really unlucky there. They had the support. There was no reason for for that little hiccup to happen and to give uh, the Reds a chance to poach that. They were looking to capitalize in the last three minutes of this half, put some more points on, on their lead. Yeah, and I love this idea of this kick here. The Blacks were a little slow to get organized on this kick, the, the penalty, so they're going to just pin it down there. And then now a little chase and the knock-on will come. The crowd so loud they can't hear. But now a black scrum, and it looks like we do have time to play this. About two minutes left in this first half, 17 to seven. It was all blacks early on. Reds just getting seven points there. Yeah, let's see, the pressure's definitely on for, the blacks definitely need to score again. I, I think, like, you're definitely gonna want that going into halftime. It's gonna feel a lot better going into, into that second half. Putting a couple more points out there because, you know, a 10 point lead uh, can be turned over really quickly. Yes. It's, it's not a good enough cushion, uh, definitely not in my experience. Yeah, you can't sit on your laurels with only two points because seven cuts it, you know. And so we'll restart with this scrum in the last few moments of this first half of the 2023 Red River Men's D1 Final. The champion moves on, the loser goes home. Big pressure coming from the Reds, but able to evade them now. And the fullback gets this one out to Lancaster. He's well tackled by Kohlberg this time. Johnson finding a little bit of space on the outside. And gonna take it himself, Lancaster, playing scrum half, seeing a little bit of a seam. And then now stepping in his hunt at the scrum half position. But again, the pressure from the Reds causing another knock on, another dropped ball, excuse me. So now the Reds will take over in the attack. And they're gonna look to run this one out. There's nothing to lose. It's out to the missile and then out to the wing. He's gonna put a big boot up. We do have the fullback, Delapina, back for this one, but it's actually picked up by Carlton. He gets on the blacks, not afraid to run this one out. That's another big run by Tua Viata. He's been taking his long legs all over this pitch, making an impact. And now to Howard. Reds in there, rucking over though, not willing to let them go without a fight into this last few moments of the first half. Nice little pickup at the back there for the Blacks. And we are into the red, so we're on the referee's watch now. Another big carry by the lock, J2 Avati. And the Blacks want more points here. They could just end it. Content to keep playing though. Into the hands of Howard. Just now putting it into touch. What a first half we've had. The Blacks up 17 to seven after 41 minutes in this 2023 men's D1 right, final. Josh, what has stood out to you the most in this first half? I'd say that there was a lot of uh, interesting strategic decisions right there. It, it really seemed like um, the Blacks would have been, they, they were definitely knocking on the door right here in this last minute and then things really did not go their way for all 45 seconds. And I thought that they would have been you know, very content to just slow it down and try to kick the ball out. 
and regroup, get catch your breath, and come back for the second half. But they were kept driving and were able to gain about 20 meters there that I, I was not expecting. And again, that Reds defense has just been absolutely suffocating. The the only the only seams that the Austin Blacks have been able to find has been after they've sent the ball sideline to sideline two or three times. Yeah, I think that, you know, the early 17 points was one thing for the Reds, but they've got their defense squared now. You're going to want to stick with us. We're going to step aside and take a break, but we'll be back for your second half of the 2023 men's D1 final where the Blacks lead 17-7. to
Appreciate it, Mr. Pinto. Yes, sir. Welcome back. Second half of the 2023 men's D1 final. Blacks out to an early lead, scoring 17 points, but then the Reds crawling back into this one. Seven points towards the end of that match. We did see an early yellow card in the first half for the Blacks, so they've survived that, and they're now back to full strength. But that second half, what tweaks are we going to see? What differences are we going to see as the Blacks are leading this one? We've seen them trade the series, but this game is the big enchilada. This is everything. Winner moves on, loser goes home. Marath going to put the boot to this one. We're seeing a little bit of breeze every once in a while, but this not really affected by that. Picked up, big barreling run there. What a hit. Opposite numbers, doing work. Crushing, bone crushing. And again, so the physicality has been there in the first half. We're seeing it again as Big Red bouncing that one down to Pats. And just seeing these brutal hits coming through. Reds seeing a bit more intentional. So maybe that halftime chat working for them. And we're going to see him looking wide, not seeing a difference. So we're going to bring that one back this way into Big Red's hands. He's going to get a little half break. And again, looking to use their forwards. They're going to use this short side as Joseph knocking that one on, though, losing it forward. So a scrum to the Blacks. An early push by the Reds. Clearly, halftime chat was let's go. Oh, absolutely was. They came out firing on all cylinders. But just a quick little miscue there. It looked like they were going for a backline play out to the left side of the field. And uh, the Austin Blacks were able to sniff that one out early, get their defenders in a great blitzing position. You saw the ball carry, look, say no, send it back right to the, the big tall lock. And then uh, looks like just just a quick, looks like that ball just kind of popped out in the middle yeah. of that tackle. Probably just a well-placed shoulder coming in contact with the ground. Just unlucky. And it looks like, the, at least for the Reds, the forwards, I don't see any changes there. So they've kept their original eight. And we'll let you know as these replacements, usually around the 60-minute mark, but you might see some right at the half. And stolen by the Reds, big drive by them. That statement is Chad Joseph picks this one up at the back. Brutal scrum there, just driving the Blacks backwards. And then now the insert play to Spike Davis. Just team. confirming from the fourth official here, there were no halftime subs from either team. Perfect. So we've got the original 15 out there. The only break was Kyle when getting that 10-minute yellow card. But this one, the missile having to offload. It's a jam that you kind of see in seven sometime. But a nice pick up there by the fullback, Alali, as he beats his one defender and then now finally going to deck as the Reds reset this and have a little bit of slow ball to get now across that 50-meter line again. It's big Obum carrying the ball there. Thank you. We just see Lopez making sure that offsides line. We did hear some creeping from both sides as the missile with a carry here. He is so difficult to tackle, very physical and strong. And the Reds have choices. They can go either way here. They're going to go to Big Red, the huge block. It's Johnny Harris, I believe. Yeah, I was just looking to see how tall he is because we have measurements and it's fun <laughs> yes. to be able to have that. Yeah, but a big carry by him. And now all the way across the pitch, short ball to Obum. And a nice offload on the inside. He's a little bit isolated, though. Now the support arrives. They can keep the attack going. Looking for the call is the scrum half. Classic milking there, but it doesn't come. So now they'll give it to the wing, who's now been playing at the inside position. He offloads to the hooker. Good tackle there. It was at the shoulder, but brought it down. Good discipline by the Blacks. Really seeing an urgency from the Reds here. They're playing Blitz. behind 17 Blitz. points in the first half unanswered, and they were only able to muster a seven pointer in that first 40 minutes. There is a poach there, but illegal, says Cisco Lopez, referee. They're going to go quick. A little tap there by the scrum half. That's Atavar. And I don't know that they were 10. Here comes the penalty. We're going to have a double whistle here. We could go to the pocket. I haven't let you talk at all. It's been such fringy. Oh, that's fine. The only thing I was saying was that you see Johnny Harris is looking a little less athletic than usual. I put it together during the first 20 minute uh, hydration break. They're rubbing some icy hot on his lower back. Looks like he might be dealing with some some soreness, some tightness and uh, definitely not his usual self. And the Blacks just received their second yellow card, so they weren't back 10. It's a cynical play trying to stop that try. So the fly half Kurt Marath is going to come sit down for 10 minutes. This could be a game changer for the Reds as they go up again with a one-man advantage. And they've called for the scrum here. So they are betting that their scrum can beat the Blacks. 
based on what I've seen in the first half, that would be a pretty decent bet. They've been they've been able to make a really good impact and push that that uh, black pack around, and luckily, you know, as I said, they, they're able to hook the ball back quickly and get the ball uh, distributed out to their fly half quickly. And I had a moment to breathe, so I was able to look down at my stats, and Big Red is a big old 6'7". He's 260. He's played for 17 years, and he's having a cracker of a match today. Hopefully his health can hold up. This one, a little bit of a struggle for the Reds, but they finally get it out. They're going to pick it off the back. It's Joseph. He's well tackled, though. Here comes the support players. Several black tacklers to get him down. They're just about seven meters out now, knocking on the door. They know they've got to get points. They've got to get on the board, especially with this yellow card now. A little bit of a slow ball. They're going to give it to Simba. He's met right at that line, toe to toe, trying to build some space. Now they've swung the backs right, and they're going to go with their fly half. And then they've got some. Joseph is in the line, and he's over. What a critical try for the Reds. The yellow card, and now the try by Chad Joseph. The, lo the eight man who's played for 30 years. 30 years. Wow. That is quite a big number. Yeah. What's the age listed on this this uh, gentleman? I have. I don't have an I, age for him, but he's I played 11 <laughs> years for the Reds, pro rugby with Ohio Aviators, Nola Gold, Houston Sabercats. So a really good caliber player and coming through critically for the Reds here. Now the score, just five points the difference, 17 to 12. This conversion, as you mentioned earlier, absolutely important for this side right now. Yeah, we'll see if uh, the conversions might make the difference in this match, but whether this one slots through or not, I think it's fair to say, Wendy, we've got a match on our hands. <laughs> we do, and it looks like we've got a couple of Blacks replacements coming in, so they're looking for some fresh legs early as we await the conversion attempt by the Reds. And it's going to be pulled wide. So the score is going to say 17 to 12. Six minutes gone in this second half. And coming on, we've got Augustine Chavez and then as well Jonah Lund coming on for the Blacks. You know, we're listening off some fun uh, facts about uh, Johnny Harris there, a big red. One that you won't find on there. He's about 30 minutes older than my girlfriend. 30 minutes? 30 minutes. For a second, I thought you said 30 years, and I was like, we well, should not be talking about this on a live stream. No, no you know? than my girlfriend. They play for the same club. They know each other. She so the, the, the Blacks replacements, one was for Samuel Johnson coming off, and that's Augustine Chavez replacing him, and then the flanker coming off as well. Uh, Timothy Howard coming off and having a rest. So some fresh legs. Could be the difference for the black side as now we've got an unanswered run by the Reds. Just five points so far, but exciting five points, bringing this match 17-12. No, it'd be 12 unanswered points from the Reds. Yes, sorry, yes, you're right. If we talk about the first half, correct. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> technical, technical, Josh. I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, Red on that one, the big carry, the big catch on the restart. And now the Reds are going to go out to that back line. And they just love to stack on, those forwards in that on. line. So this one poached by the Blacks, though. Get back, boys. Get inside. And stolen. So now the Blacks will take over. They're inside the 40. And we've seen this oh, man do this all day long. So hard to take his long legs down. But he knocks this one on just off of his own knee. So actually, it's technically not a knock. But I think we're going to go with it. But that, that man and his long legs, Jay Tavita, has had a fantastic match for the Blacks today. You see, that was just really unfortunate. He was looking for that offload. And... and and oddly enough, the uh, the support player was not there. Time off, time off, time off. Have some time off real quick. Yeah, I think we've got a blood for, is that Simba? Oh, no, contact. So it's just a contact. So he's got it back. He's got his eyeballs in. And then the Reds are putting in a sub. We've got Jackson Slater. and His nickname is Jackson Slater. I love that. He's 6'6", 256, 255. He's played for 10 years, Woodlands. He's a Woodlands youth player, Baylor, Hurt, and the Sabercats. So he'll come in and replace Big Red, who we've seen getting some attention in this second half, or the first half as well. So he's going to sit down for the Reds. Big loss there. He is a stalwart. He's been on this club for a really long time. Yeah, he was the skipper for their national championship run last year. Lots of experience coming off the field at this point. But as you said, with the pedigree of number 19 coming in. Yeah, not so, not so bad when you have an MLR player <laughs> yeah. coming in to replace someone. So, But big scrum for the Reds here. They are backed up just right on that 22-meter line, having scored 12 points while the Blacks scored 17 really early on in the first half. So a lead... Change could be coming. We'll have to see, though. Receiving that ball a little bit flat-footed. 
is the wing, Spike Davis. Speaking of MLR players and pro rugby players, he's played for Dallas, USA 15s, Tiger 1823, Columbus, Ohio Aviators, Tiger Atlantis. And then they're going to just put the boot to this one and clear those lines. So this will be a Blacks line out. And we've still got this yellow card, about four minutes left on that. Thanks for raising your watch so I can see that. <laughs> no problem. Just really trying to uh, uh, enrich the, the broadcast here and, and not, <laughs> not trip over my own words here. But yeah, this is... This is definitely going to, it looks like it's turning into a tail of two halves. It is so far, absolutely. This Austin side coming out really flat in the second half so far. Um, still a competitive match, but... Yeah, I wouldn't say, I don't know flat, right? But like the Reds are turned on, right? Yeah. Maybe just not as electric as the first 10 minutes of the <laughs> yes, match, I should yeah. say. <laughs> and the Blacks taking over here with this line out. They do like to work from that set piece, and they're using those forwards to just pound at the line, and that's a big carry by Spencer Cameron. Double whistle, though. We've got some extracurriculars happening over here. So a little bit of pushing and shoving. So Lopez will just try to slow this down as the players, as we say, they're working this out themselves, right? As long as they don't throw any fisticuffs, we're golden. So we'll see what that penalty comes back for. If, if the calls from the player sidelines are to be believed, I believe they're <laughs> taking offense to some offsides there, yeah. if they're to be believed. Uh, so it looks like the Blacks are going to get the benefit of the doubt here. They get the penalty, and we can see it looks like they're going to take a shot at goal here, knowing that points are really critical here, and they can extend their lead a bit more with three points here. And their fly half is in the sin bin chair next to us, so they will have a replacement kicker. And it looks like it's going to be the scrum half stepping up, Craig Hunt. If I were to be a little cheeky here and I was playing on this Austin Blacks team, I would take this kick as slowly as possible and try to work that three minutes down as much as possible to try to uh, eliminate that one-man deficit. They would never do that, Josh. <laughs> they would absolutely do that. They should manage the clock, absolutely. Hey, it's not cheating. It's strategy. No, it's right. Yep. Oh, and it isn't Craig Hunt on the kick. It's going to be the fullback, Connor Delapina, who will try to extend this lead. This could be worth three points. Could extend it 20 to 12. Looks to be about a 35-meter kick. And you can hear the crowd shushing, but then the fans not wanting to do that. And this one straight through the outpost, a low kick, but extending that lead. Beautiful kick by Connor Delapina, 20 to 12. 50 minutes gone in this match. Clearly he did not listen to me. He only took a minute to take that kick. But it's all right because now the Reds have to score, convert, and score again. This is a two-score game now, and uh, this Austin side growing a little more comfortable with their lead. I know they would love to put some more points on in the second half for sure, though. Yeah, and the kicker, when you make those, you know you've just settled your side. You're ready to go again. You're going to get the ball here on the kickoff. So it's always a good step to take those points when they're on offer. And here comes the first half problems. But Kyle Breckenbacker is going to take this one and go. He doesn't mind that it's not 10. But we saw those miscues early on for the Reds in the first half. Hopefully they're not back. As a big carry by Johnson as he gets over the gain line. And then a short ball. Some fancy feet here. He keeps it inbounds, but it's stolen by the Reds. That was just a really bad no-look pass there as he was trying to go into touch. Yeah. Question: You want to keep it alive, of course, but then it's not quite to hand. And the fighting here at this nice tackle there. He gets the scrum half, but it's going to be offsides. Trying to get that ankle tap. And some conversation here between the referee and the would-be tackler. That was Gabriel Farley with the ankle tap, but deemed to have been offsides. So the Reds will put this one into touch, possibly. And it is kept in bounds by the Blacks. Really nice play there by the wing to hold this one in. And we'll just put it up, gain some territory. Bounce pass is a good pass in rugby. It's into the hands of Kohlberg, who beats one, two. And he's inside the Blacks' territory. We do have a player down for the Blacks. So now they're playing with 13 players. He's able to get back up, and he's limping back into position as Big Simba takes over on a carry here. Excuse me, it's Umba. And then they're going to go out. They've got an, an, a mismatch. There's some space on the outside. It's the hooker on the run. That's Yarian. You can definitely tell in the first half he would have he would have broken that one free, but a little slower in the second half after doing a lot of work so far. Nice pop there by Simba. He gets put on his back. 
But the ball carrier, it's ripped now. And I think we're going to take a look at this. We've got some a foul play call by AR Drulo. So we may have Simba getting hit when he did not have the ball. Obviously, you can't hit him if he doesn't have the ball. That's going to be a really, really bad penalty if it happens, if, if that's the way it gets called. Although we're right at the very end of this yellow card. Yeah, the Blacks could be in trouble here. They could be possibly getting Kurt Marath back in a second, but then having another player come and sit down for another 10 minutes as Cisco Lopez and Drew Lowe talk this one through. If it was bad enough, it could be an entire 17 minutes. Yeah, if there was any head contact, of course, and they'll go through the framework. So for those of you watching at home, if there is any head contact and there's no mitigating factors, we could be looking at a red, but it looks like we're just going to have a penalty here. Time on the yellow. Mm. And we've still got a minute to go on that yellow card for the Blacks, so the Reds do have an advantage here, a one player. And we are going to have a substitution. The uh, scrum half coming off, Achavar coming off for the Reds and will be replaced by McMurray. Noodler, he's 6 feet, 200 pounds, and has a stellar mustache. He just showed it to us. He's got the curl on the edges going. He looks fantastic. So he'll take over the scrum half spot for the Reds. That's got to absolutely be a typo. This man is known by the name of Noodles. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's Noodler. Maybe it is Noodles. And the Reds are going to take over here. Nice line out. And noodle, Noodles or Noodler, he's going to move the ball quickly. We'll just call him Nude. And no way, we should not call him Nude. <laughs> but the, the Reds have broken through. That's the inside center, Darian Pickett, who does not have a middle name or a nickname. He did not want to give one. And they go with their forwards here, about seven meters out, attacking that line. And that's a big carry by Obum. Yes, number six. It looked like he was tackled at first, but he was able to wriggle free. And then, then coming able to in. Run, sorry, go ahead. Run, once again. And Spike Davis on a short line. Now we've got some space outside. You can see the fly half calling for it. They think they've got a mismatch on the outside, but it's tied up in the middle. Maybe touchdown. Not yet. Penalty, though. It's a penalty. The Reds think they've scored, but it's a penalty to the Reds. No, 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 no. Penalty, penalty. And you can see the excitement. The, the, the red sideline thought they'd scored, so they're coming out. So they're going to tap this McMurray. He's going to give it to Obum. Going to go right up the gut. They've got to be right on that five-meter line, maybe inside of it now. To the center, the missile. He's been so great today. A good clearance. And now out to the outside. It's Joseph. He reaches. He's already got one try today. McMurray lines up at the scrum half position. Good defense so far by the Blacks. It's Simba, it's into his hands, held down again. It's Kyle Brettenbrecker on the tackle. He tries to poach, but he can't. The ball's slow to come now. Knocking on the door, McMurray will go out to the fly half. Now it's to the hooker who's been hanging out in that inside center spot. There's the pick from the back. That's the hooker. We're going to see. It looks like he knocked it on. Wow. And the black supporters are going absolutely nuts in the sidelines. As they should. And because of that extended face, as because of that extended face play, it looked like uh, the Reds were able to squeak about two extra minutes out of that yellow card, unable to get uh, the fly half back on for the Blacks. Looks like we've got a player down. Yeah, Kyle does come back on now. Morta coming back, or Marath, excuse me, coming on for the Blacks. So they will come back to full strength. But the Reds, lots of possession here. They have been pounding the Blacks here. We saw the Reds playing a lot of defense in the first half, and now we're seeing that switch where the, the Blacks are having to play a lot of defense in this second match. And again, the only point scored by the half is three points, while the Reds have scored What's the situation? 12 okay. points unanswered. Oh, and I know that the, this Reds team definitely pride themselves on uh, that pick and go right there at the, the goal line. I saw them, that's how they were able to beat the Huns in their opening match. It was an absolutely disgustingly muddy game, and it was all forwards all day, low scoring, and uh, they were able to score two tries in that same fashion. Just the pick and go, two meters at a time, marching it, and I, one of their tries had to be at least 20 phases. It was impressive. That's amazing. I mean, when you look at their, their forward pack, everybody's over 200 pounds. They're all at least 5'9". Time is on. And it's it's amazing that the strength they've got in that forward pack. Um, I don't have the same stats for the Blacks. I would love to talk about how big they are and how strong they are, but I have to do it on physical characteristics. But we can see this scrum here. The Blacks have an opportunity to get out of jail here. 
really gonna... uncharacteristic push by the the Black's Ford pack there. Yeah, giving him a little bit of distance as they try to work this out. They're going to just run a couple of phases, and then the penalty there, that extra roll, the caterpillar, if you will. So now the it turns again, and the Reds have a chance. And it looks like they're going to elect to go. No, they're setting up to go for the free kick. Nope, scrum it is. Yeah, taking a little bit more time there, the Reds, but they have done well. They haven't necessarily been taking advantage of the Blacks in the scrum too much, so an interesting call, but I will say you've got, you know, 60 minutes in almost. Everybody's a little bit tired. Some of those replacements haven't come in yet. This is a good time to scrum and, and really just try to put the pressure on the Blacks. Oh, absolutely, and let's see, because I know that there's been one there's been one substitution on each pack, so I don't think that's too much to affect, you know, who's going to really dominate. The fresh legs not making too much of a difference. Let's see where this ball goes. And we can see the fullback for the Reds is in the line between the missile and the inside center. The scrum, they're going to try to push it in a bit, but McMurray's going to pick it out the back now. It's straight to the missile. He's been so big for them today. Good support is there. McMurray's calling for the pod. They're coming now. It's a slow ball. It's into the hands of the replacement. That's Jackson Slater, whose nickname is Jackson Slater. Love that. Killer nickname. And then it's into the big locks hands. That's Pats. So Reds content to kind of slow this down and control these breakdowns. Double tackle there by the Blacks. Let's go, boys. And switch directions again. Nice short ball to Obum. But the Blacks defense is holding here so far. The phases are stacking up. Now, McMurray looking to release to the backs. And it's that short ball again to the fullback. It's picked up by the Blacks though. This is gonna be a foot race to the end. And he has got the pace. This is the scrum half, Craig Hunt. He's gonna be able to touch this one down. Gives us the number one finger and they go up by more points, 25-12. What a turn of events there, picking up that loose ball and taking it 80 meters. It's really impressive. That's the kind of plays that we were expecting to see really in the first half when, when this Austin side was really firing on all, all cylinders, but they weren't able to take advantage in that triumphant kind of way, that really resounding, just like a breakaway of so many meters. Yeah, absolutely. That was just so fantastic. Just that individual effort. He knew he had the pace. He backed himself and uh, was able to take this up. The kick here, important. Marath is back on from his yellow card, so he's got fresh legs. And then uh, we'll see if he can extend this lead to 27 to 12, making it a three score game. I just got to say, that's some really impressive resilience right there. Just really nerves of steel by this Austin Black side to sit there and defend their own 22 for the yeah. better of 10 to 12 minutes yeah. and then to respond with a play like that. This is a great game. Yeah, this is what we wanted to come here for this men's D1 final this year. Again, the winner moves on here. The loser goes home with nothing. But still, we've got 20 minutes to go. They are going to take a water break after this. So we've got 20 minutes to go in this final. The pressure could not be any bigger for these two teams. Cap. And Marath just taking up every second he can with this conversion, knowing that it could come down to who can make their points here. Sneaking this one off the post. Oh, He's no. had a tough day at the tee today. Just barely knocking it back in. Yeah, so they'll take that hydration break, and this has been an amazing second half. The first half, again, the Blacks came out with 17 points and then had a yellow card, and the Reds were able to score seven points. But then second half started, the Reds had that urgency, the excitement at their back. They score, but then the Blacks get a penalty goal and then another try here, and we have got a match on our hands. <laughs> I was going to say that you definitely hear the, uh, the contingency of the Austin side over in the sidelines being very quiet and then right as I was about to say you started hearing some some hoops and some hollers from uh, some supporters from that other Dallas team <laughs> and it looks like during the hydration break we will have a couple of substitutions I believe it's for the Reds so we'll see as they come on but we'll have number 20 coming off for 
excuse me, number 11 coming off, Kelly Kohlberg, and I don't have a 20 on my roster, so somebody's coming on. <laughs> and then uh, number 15 coming off, so Alex Elelia, baby Alex, who's had a great game. And then uh, 23, Benjamin Ollie, Benny coming on. Got Aaron Davis there getting a little um, attention from the sports medicine staff. Looked like uh, maybe had a, a little bit of a bloody nose there, getting that cleaned up. And you can maybe you can hear the sideline, but the Reds just saying there's 20 minutes left. This is it. Let's go. And I'm sure we're having the same conversation for the Blacks, but it might be let's hold on for 20 minutes, right? Like let's make sure we've got this. Not, let's not stop scoring by any means, but let's hold this lead. We've got 25 points to their 12. 20 minutes to go. We could be going to the ship. And there's a good chance that either team that that uh, wins here today is going to be playing in that final that finals match there in uh, St. Louis. Correct? I believe that was just announced. Yeah, St. Charles. Yeah. Oh, St. Charles. Yeah, it's pretty much St. Louis, so it's the same thing. I'm sure they would be offended to hear you say that, but <laughs> yeah, it's close enough. Okay, so we have Matt Raz coming on for the Blacks, coming on at the wing, and Menda Carlton will take a break. Had a fantastic match. He's had a lot of return kicks, counter kicks that were really good for the Blacks. 20 minutes to go. Blacks up 25 to 12. 10 points for the Blacks in the second half and seven for five for the Reds. And that kick, this kickoff has been just a struggle for the Reds. We saw several of their first half kicks not going 10 like this. Not something we would normally see for a D1 side, much less the 22 defending champions. No, absolutely not. This is the, the kind of problem that I'm seeing with uh, my high school athletes that I'm currently coaching. <laughs> um, Unfortunately, we, we get a lot of chances to uh, practice our kickoffs, but uh, some of them are getting a little too cheeky, only going eight or nine meters. <laughs> trying to hang it. Trying to hang it. Yeah, we, trying we, to be cool. <laughs> I mean, it's a strategic advantage if you can get uh, your fast guys over there and knock it back to your, your own team. Absolutely. So the Blacks will take over and have the scrum. Craig Hunt, the try scorer in this second half, will feed this in. We have seen the Reds starting to push the Blacks around a little bit in the scrum. Might have a little bit of a weight advantage. And this little bit of a turn, but picked up out of the back by Johnson. It's into Hunt's hand. He's going to put a kick to it. He saw the wing come up. This is good rugby by the Blacks. Into the end goal and kicked. And it's, it's a large end goal, but it does go out the back. They're definitely going to have a conversation here. They're going to chat about this because what did you see? Uh, to me, it looked like the Reds player made contact with the side flag, which would put him into touch as he was trying to play the ball. Ooh, does and it? I, and I think that's... Touch flag is in on the end goal. Oh, it is flag in the end goal. In. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Because I forget that the rules of rugby do not apply in the dead ball zone. <laughs> yes. I forget it so often. <laughs> but based on... Uh, I, I was just taking that based on uh, the Austin Black supporters over there and how excited they were getting. So it looks like after the chat, it was knocked on. So the excitement, woo! And the Reds come out of this one a little bit lucky, getting that knock on. Time is so we'll have a scrum here. So the knock on occurred outside of the end goal. And so the Reds will work out of their own five meter, but a try there could have sealed the match. That, that would have been the dagger in the heart for sure. And definitely uh, dashing uh, any hopes and any, any uh, really confidence that the Reds had left. But again, I still would be wary to, to count them out. They're still very deadly with the ball in hand, getting it out to their backs. Yeah, we, we've seen it definitely. As they work this one out, out to the missile, and then out to some, we have the new replacements in for them. Some fresh legs here for the Reds. Nice run, big long legs by Ollie. And with a single phase, they're able to return that ball right about to the 22 meter line. And you can just hear the tension of the coaches on the sideline instructing their players, trying to knock this one down, bouncing over the head of Matt Raz. It was almost another charge down there. And then he's going to put this one up, the fullback, Delapina, try scorer in the first half, missing missile. So he's on a tear, running across the pitch, now releasing it out to the edges of the Reds. Big tackle, though. That was boogie by, with ball in hand. Yeah, by the Blacks. And I think they get the poach here. No, that was a penalty for uh, not releasing the ball. Great turnover, and now... Uh, Some extracurriculars again. Somebody taking exception, exception to um, style of play over here. 
Yeah, and they're right in front of all those black supporters who are not afraid to be loud. And uh, a couple of my friends that are watching will, will note the irony of uh, Noodles being the one to calm the tempers on the sideline over there for the Reds players. Not known for that, is he? Uh, it's usually the opposite. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. He's a scrum half. That's his job. He needs to noodle. <laughs> he he, he, play, he plays a lot of positions, but he also plays with a lot of passion. Gotcha. And we've got another substitution about to come on for the Reds. Gonzo Ruiz coming on. And he's replacing the scrum half, Boogie, who's had a decent game. A little bit of miscues at the line out there. The hooker. Yep, the hooker. Yeah. What did Got, I say? Uh, you said the scrum half. Oh, sorry. The hooker, yes. You got scrum halves on the mind. Yeah, yeah. Don't blame you. Yeah. <laughs> and then the Blacks also having a substitution. Antonio Wynn coming on. Some fresh legs there. Gonzo Ruiz, the uh, longtime Dallas Harlequin, known to switch, switch around and uh, play with multiple teams. He's got a long-tenured pass, solid player, almost impossible to tackle on uh, by yourself. Need some friends. All right, so the Blacks looking to extend their lead here. 25-12, 15 minutes left in this game. Who moves on? Nice mall there. It's on roller skates. Now the Reds driving it backwards, so they pull it out. It's into the hands of Farley. Good tackle there. Cleared out. I'd say that was a little bit of a questionable clear out. And Hunt's going to keep the attack going. It's to Avadi on the carry. Nice tackle behind the gain line by the Reds. Still in this. And now they're going to come this way to the fresh hands of Antonio Wynn. He gives it to the fullback, Delapina. Back to Wynn. Back to back tackles by the missile there. Yes, very nice work by him. And then these fresh replacements coming on. Chavez with the carry. Really making an impact for these blacks. The prop, Talavisi still on and carrying. And then it's into the eight man's hands. That's Johnson. And the pick from the back. The big lock with the carry. And Hunt just gonna control this game. This becomes time management, clock management now. 14 minutes to go, three score game. And again, it's the prop with a carry, Talisi. The Reds are definitely committing a lot of defensive resources, a lot of men close to the ball to get that, that suffocating line speed. If, if the Blacks want to ice this one, they just need to get it out wide because they've clearly got the numbers advantage near the sidelines. And Marath put the boot to this one, so it's picked up by the Reds. And it's slow coming here. It's picked out of the back by Ollie Benny. Starting to see nobody's springing up from the ground. It's taking a little bit longer for everybody to come up. They're going to get it out to the missile. He's going to take one. Steps one. Finally tackled from behind. Support coming for the Blacks, though. They're going to pick this one up. They've stolen it. And they're going to take this one in under the post. And that is a critical, critical try. Could be the nail in the coffin as this makes it a four-score game. That was definitely your favorite lock on that play right there. He's done so much work around the pitch, he deserved that one. Oh, absolutely. Unfortunately, this seems to be a little bit of the story of the second half here. Some of these Reds players playing a little bit too individually, trying to do a little bit too much, not trusting their, their teammates to get there and support. Um, you saw the missile just took that tackle with no one around him, and then it was a quick poach, and then a pick and go from the Blacks. You know, it, pointing out, you're, you're saying that nobody's really... Uh, Springing up off the field on this one, you know we've only got about 12 minutes left in this in this match here, and you know a lot of these guys have not been subbed out. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of them uh, prepping up and queuing right here to uh, come out onto the field. Yep, now they're coming the replacements, and the Reds have had an absolutely stunning season, undefeated until they faced the Blacks a few weeks ago, and then today, unless something magical happens. They will be ending their season, and the, and the Blacks could be going on as he slots the conversion. The fullback, Delapina, who's had a great game, extending that lead 32 to 12. Just a few minutes left, and the Reds just asking for those replacements to come on. So it looks like we've got John McAuliffe coming on, also Richard Stevens coming on, and then Paula 
Cyber 2 coming on as well. A Fijian under 20 player, so some big names coming on for the Reds as we see Simba coming off. And then the Blacks also having a few substitutions too. So fresh legs just rolling off the benches now. Yes, and uh, just a quick congratulations to Richard Stevens, recently married. Congrats Amazing. to him. Yeah. High restart taken by the Blacks though. And Marath going to put the boot to this one. We do have some Reds players back. It's through the hands of Ollie, but he's able to gather it in. And now into the hands of the fullback, who's going to carry this one forward. Loose ball, but picked up by the Reds. Big hit by the Blacks tackle. Their defense. Just loose ball, just that pressure from the Blacks is just not relenting. See Nate Jones over there taking a bit of uh, exemption to uh, the style of play. As he's known to do, he is the uh, known as the enforcer here on this Reds team. And that's a big carry by Slater. McMurray picking it up. Here's the fresh legs. Richard Stevens getting stood up. Just too many black jerseys that he tried to run into there. Yeah, the Blacks are feeling this. They know they've got less than 10 minutes to go. And they drive this tackle back. This black wall of jerseys is making it very difficult for the Reds right now. They're just going side to side. You see, there's just smothering tackles coming from the Blacks right now. They've got two guys committed to every single tackle. And it seems like a, they're really muddying up the ruck so that um, so that the Reds aren't able to get that quick ball and, and take advantage of their numbers. A nice idea there by the Dallas Fly Half, just thinking he can put a chip, a chip in, go get it himself, but it didn't quite go to hand and then knocked on and can just seeing that frustration from Dallas and the jubilation from the Blacks. Yes. <laughs> you see the Black sidelines there absolutely taking so much pleasure in the frustration of the Reds as they kick the ball away trying to slow down the game. And Justin Brown checking in for the Blacks with that mullet flowing as he runs on. Oh, the flow is glorious. And he'll replace the scrum half Hunt, who's had a great game, one try himself. Yes, he had that, that quick pickup and, and the 90-meter run. Yeah. Where it looked like he, uh, he had quite a few steps on his defender there. Yeah, he pinned those ears back. And it looks like our favorite lock today in the game, just receiving a bit of attention for cramps. Well, it wasn't the lock, excuse me, it's uh, Tavita at hooker. Nine minutes left in this game. Big hole for the Blacks to, excuse me, the Reds to try to dig out of. It does seem that the Blacks have sewn this one up, but you never know. You can never say end until the end. Let's definitely see what's happening here. If, uh, these fresh legs on um, the back line here from the Reds, see if they can help to shore up that defense to really keep the, the Blacks from running away, really, at the tail end of this match. It's picked up out of the back by Johnson. <coughs> and then it coming back the diff this other direction, but the pod was not there. They weren't quite ready for that, so it's picked up by the inside center, Farley. the scrum half just taking a little bit of extra time. There's no reason to rush now, Justin Brown. The pressure's all on the Reds here. It's very contentious there at the Ruck as a jersey is taken off. And they're gonna, Marath gonna just put this one up. There's no wing back. So just pin the Reds. And that's where maybe a little bit more experience uh, needed in the wing there. He, he was pulled all the way up and Marath knew he could go quick and cut it over the top. But the Reds go quick on the line out here. It's the fly half again with a little chip over the top. Lots of blacks back there to get this one. It's Lancaster again. He's had a fantastic match, scoring one try at least, and he's all the way up to the 22 meter line. Now it's offloaded to Johnson. He's inside the five, one tackle to beat, and he's gonna go in under the post. Chad Johnson, or excuse me, Hayden Johnson with another try for the Blacks. They're unbeatable at this point. You can just see the body language, just the confidence draining out of this Reds team right now. <laughs> really, 
to, to put in all this work to play so well and to technically be seated above the blacks for this game so they're technically the home team and just to see this slip away in in a fashion right here in front of you know you've got a fairly sizable amount of fans there <laughs> yeah. the supporters that came to to support them and this has just got to be crushing yeah and the kick here just adding more insult to injury doesn't make a difference really if he makes it or not. They've got 37 points on the board to only 12 by the Reds. But you can see we do have Jackson Slater lined up to charge this. He's not done yet. He's come on and, and carried the ball well for the Reds and tries to use all of his six feet, six feet, six inches to stop that one, but it goes over. So the Blacks up 39-12, seven minutes left to go in this final. Crazier things have happened, right? Crazier things have happened. But, I, I, I remember, I think you chastised me a touch in, in playing, it was commentating the Mary Graham All-Stars and the uh, the DC team, Capital. Yeah. Was, oh, yeah, yeah. That game was, I was crazy. I, I was hoping yeah. for them to uh, to come back from a 37-point deficit in the second half. Yeah. But. Yeah. And then the restart there wasn't quite 10, but the Blacks decided to play that one but couldn't gather it in, so we'll have a, a red scrum. And you can see they did have a little bit of hurry up at that restart, so they're, they're still in this. They know they've got a lot to play for. As you mentioned, Josh, they're seated higher than the Blacks coming into this one. But it looks like unless something drastically changes, the Blacks will walk away from this one with a W. Yeah, it looks like they're about to punch their, their ticket to uh, the finals weekend. and. Quick to point out, though, uh, historically, save from last year, the home team generally wins these bouts when these two teams match up. Yeah, and it's homish, right? Home we're not at the Blacks pitch, but right. yeah, we're at beautiful Nixon Lane, home of the Huns and Valkyries. But yeah, we've got one black player down, so he looks like he's injured. Could be just a cramp. But the Reds on a tear here. They're not done yet. It's the wing. He's done very well all day long. It's Spike Davis. Now McMurray's going to make it out to the left. Some of these fresh legs in, having a difference. Wow, that Black's defense is just really suffocating. The line speed, really impressive here in the last five minutes of this match. Still that they're able to just suck them up like this. Yes, and down a man right now as the lock getting looked at. Out to Spike Davis again. We've got Inside step, beats one. He's got to be very close to that line. He's got a little bit of support in his inside center. Going to go out to the edge. It's Chad Joseph for his second try, and it's awarded. Wow. The Reds not done here. And he's going to just drop kick this attempt, the fly half, and it's going to go wide. They're going to try to hurry up this kick, but we probably will stop this match. We'll probably stop this match for this injury here You'll, as the camera pans around, and here comes the stop. So about four and a half minutes left in this match. The Reds are not done they don't yet. They not have any tacticals left. And they were able to score that try, but it could have been much easier. There was a, a three on one to the right side had uh, Spike Davis just pass that ball out to the right. Yeah, a little bit I want to do it myself. I got this, but yeah, they got it, right? They got the points, they get the fiver. And uh, we're just hearing that the Blacks are out of tactical subs, so meaning that they can't do any normal substitutions. They would only be able to do a front row or a foul play substitution at this point. Or a blood sub. Correct, yes. Um, so he's going to stay on, it looks like. They're still trying to stretch this out, see if he can continue. This is the big lock. He's had a fantastic day, Jay, to of Ayati. I would, the say, blacks. I would definitely say that he's uh, in need of some of that their uh, magical pickle juice. <laughs> what is this? Slide uh, that free promo in there. Oh, no, I think this is uh, a $5 bill from <laughs> Philip Coopins. Oh, do we get $5? He's, he's uh, putting it in my pocket as we speak. <laughs> so we'll restart this, and the Reds were trying to go quick. They're trying to preserve this clock. Four and a half minutes left, and we can hear the, the black sideline just saying, four minutes, hold on, hold on, hold on. Time is on. But we could still have an exciting last few minutes of this match to go in this 2023 men's D1 Red River final. The Blacks are gonna come up with this one on the kickoff though. They're trying to get him into touch. It's Raz with the ball. He's gonna offload this one. And the Blacks maintain pressure, possession. And then breaking through the line, getting tackled from behind, finally brought down, but they are inside the 22 now, attacking. This is not what the Reds want. They want the ball. 
They need the ball. They attempt the poach here. They don't get it. Going to pass it out to a player on the ground, but Matt Raz is going to pick it up. He is deadly on that wing. And just the pressure coming from the Reds as Justin Brown is swallowed as he picks this one up. But he's clearly on the deck, and now they release. And they're going to slow this down now and start to use those forwards and see if they can wind this clock down even more. It was just really sloppy play there for a couple of phases. Look at the sidelines calling for a knock-on, calling for a high tackle. Was something that looked almost like an obstruction. Really coming down to the last three and a half minutes here. And then penalized are the Reds offsides. And they're going to go for the post here and then work this clock a little bit more. Kurt Morath will surely use every second that he can here. And just to correct myself here for, for my own information, when after a try, there's the conversion kick, you have one minute to kick. When does that one minute begin? It's the arrival of the tee, but amateur rugby, it doesn't always happen that way. Right, okay, and I was just curious, how long can the tee take to get out <laughs> yeah, there? Yeah, right, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It does need to come quickly. Um, I think most referees, I mean, Cisco Lopez is an MLR referee, an international world rugby referee, he's, he's fantastic. Um, but most referees, I think it is kind of a longer clock. They'll let it run the whole time. But Della Pina going to have the conversion attempt here. He's taken over the kicking attempts for the Blacks in the second half, as we can see that big lock. Jay Tuivayati stretching out those calves, trying to get them to come back. It's been an oddly warm day here in Austin, but a beautiful day at that. And Della Pina going to push this one to the wide but the clock damage is there as the blacks 39 17 and they're going to play on here the reds they've got to do something magical and it begins with a replacement he's looking around for help that's 22 sayota taking this one he does offload eventually and the Reds are here. They've got numbers on the outside here. They've got some green grass looking for the pass is the replacement, Gonzo Ruiz, but he keeps it himself. Now the Blacks are in there counter-rucking this. Picked up by Slater into McMurray's hands. It's gone backwards, said the referee. There's a knock though, we'll play some advantage. And then we've got some grass in front of us. It's Chad Joseph into the hands of the wing, Spike Davis. We've got a couple players sprinkled down around the pitch. Now it's picked from the back. John McClough taking it himself. And the penalty finally coming. Not rolling away. They're going to go fast. It's Spike Davis questioning, are they 10? Driving him towards the touchline, but he stays in bounds. Now it's picked up by Ombu. We've got one black player down and one Reds player. And it's the scrum half, McMurray. But it bounces out of the hands of Ollie. And now we'll have a scrum to the Blacks. And we are inside one minute left in this match. And of course, Cisco Lopez referee does have the full-time whistle. But now we can definitely say the Blacks are going to the ship. I think that's a safe bet. <laughs> I had something planned that I was going to say, and then you just totally short-circuited my brain there. I rocked you. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say something to the effect of, yes, it didn't take indeed take near a type five to take Gonzo Ruiz down on that one run he had here. It did, yes, yeah. And then uh, the Reds were, were doing well to to uh, have some impromptu play there without their, their number nine, technically number 21 in this situation. But playing without the scrum half, a lot of, not a lot of pick and go. They were able to spread the ball wide and almost, almost got all the way down to the try line. Yeah, and this is, I mean, We've got to think back to the first 10 minutes of this match. The Blacks scored 17 points unanswered. The first 30 seconds they scored off of a charge down. They were quickly in charge of this match, and then the Reds just were trying to play out of a hole the whole game. They've done well, but the Blacks able to take that 17 points and turn it into 39 points here. Yeah, we were saying that it was uh, a tale of two halves, but it really it seemed like it was a... Uh, uh, a high-performance sandwich, if you will. Yes. <laughs> Black crust on the outside and uh, some red meat in the inside? Or am I pushing that? Is that, that a Reuben? Yeah. Uh, yeah, why not? Ish. I feel like I'm probably... Corned, what is that, beef? As know. Marath puts this one into touch, and the Blacks have won the 2023 Men's D1 Final. 
39 to 17. Stay with us. We're going to have the trophy presentation. Hopefully, we'll try to bring the trophy presentation here to you. And uh, congratulations to the Austin Blacks. A fantastic effort by them. The Reds never really in this one, but never really gave up either, even in this last few minutes trying to get more points on the board and come back from this big deficit. Oh, absolutely not. There was 20 minutes there where the game was all Reds, all defense, all offense. They were just completely dominant there for that 20 minutes, but unfortunately too big of a hole to dig themselves out of, too much of a deficit to overcome. Just one hell of a match. This is the way you want to see it back and forth for the finals. Yeah, so congratulations to the Blacks. They move on. Stay with us tomorrow. We've got all the other finals at 11. We'll have the men's D3 semi or final, and then at 1 o'clock, the women's D2 final, and then the last match of the weekend is our – excuse me, I made that backwards. Men's D2 first, and then men's D3 is at 3 o'clock. So stay with us on YouTube, and we'll have uh, some presentations for you in a bit, and then stick with us tomorrow. Test, we'll test.
We're good? All right, gentlemen, congratulations on winning the 2023 Red River Division I Championship. Well done, Austin Blacks. Unfortunately, we're going to have the trophy for you tomorrow because all the trophies are at storage for tomorrow. So we will have that. But we're really looking forward to you guys going to nationals and bringing home another Division I national championship for the Texas Rugby Union and the Red River Conference. And for Austin, Texas, the best rugby city in the United States of America. Well done, boys. Congratulations. Okay.